Someone shot and killed Dante Barksdale. Talking about forgiveness and then madness came along. He was the streets. This actually happened. People should know that Tater was a beam of light. A man is dead after a shooting on Douglas Court in Baltimore. Dante Barksdale is being called a champion amongst crime fighters and a hero for the city. Mayor Brandon Scott released a statement. Police Commissioner Michael Harrison says Barksdale embodied a message of redemption and peace. Dante Barksdale. Dante Boxdale. Conflict resolution. Mediation. Problem solved. See the power of this forgiveness. He was someone who had endured a lot of struggles throughout his life. He wanted to help a lot of people around him. He didn't like seeing people down, struggle, nothing. He played a role as a dad in my life since I was three years old. This is what he stood for, you know, he lived it, right? Peace, love, forgiveness. He's been touched around the world. This man made CNN news, you know, and the things they say about him, it's true. That's different, everything he's saying about him, is true. To say it plainly, Tata saved lives. He went from the projects to prison to being a pillar of the Baltimore community. East is one of the most dangerous places in America. But we gonna change that. We gonna change that. As you can see, Tater um, arms stretch from White Marge to, to Orange Mills. I can't imagine what Baltimore would be like without Mr. Barkdale's work. A few weeks before he died, Dante and I had a conversation. You won't believe this, man. To me, it happened to Lee, it happened to Yadi, it happened to Leon, his niece, my mother. You know what I'm saying? It happened to all of us. That was a tragedy. You know what I'm saying? And I lived with it for a long time, man. But I'm telling you, on Friday, man, she really, like, healed me, bro. She healed me because she told me she forgave me, bro. Yeah, a little backstory. Dan, get one of these chairs over here, Dan, or whatever you want. I, I was released March uh, 2017 after serving 38 years in prison. And I started a victim awareness program when I was in weight in honor of the young man life that I took. I met Dante Boxdale in the mid-90s. Dante Boxdale was a young guy that was very active in the prison system, but he was caught between a tug of war. First of all, he come from this very famous family. Just carrying that name for the past 20 years since he's been out of prison, it meant a lot for the city that, that yes, you can come from doing harmful things to the city to doing beautiful and positive things. And it was very symbolic uh, carrying that name. People had expectations based on that name because it was famous, you know, because of the TV show and everything. The Wire. The Wire. If you walk through the garden. Mark Stale has five out of seven towers on the terrace. I'm just a gangster, I suppose. So, the connection between Dante Barksdale and The Wire. Uh, his uncle was uh, very well known across the city in the 80s and 90s. The figure in the, the Wire was Avon Barksdale, but his real name was Bodie. Actually, in 12th grade, I had watched The Wire in class, and they kept saying my last name. I was getting everything because I didn't want to keep hearing my name over and over and over. Barksdale. Avon Barksdale. Uh, mighty Barksdale was going to afford to sit back and play low key. You know, just dream with me. We ain't got a dream no more, man. When The Wire came out, that name became known all across the country, but it was always known all across Baltimore. 
People said Bodie was the inspiration for Avon Box's little character on The Wire. But let me tell you, the HBO producers had all kinds of things around. Shrinkers would never have been friends with Bodie. Marla would never have killed him, and Omar would never have existed. A dude like this would have been dead right away. Uncle Bo Bodie is the reason everyone in Baltimore, cops and street dudes alike, know my name. And The Wire is the reason the rest of America knows it. On the street, it works in my favor. In front of a judge, not so much. On the street, it works in my favor. In front of the judge, not so much. You motherfucker, right? <laughs> not so much. <laughs> No, dad loved the, his last name. He used to always tell people, he used to tell me like, your name is Ayanna Barksdale. You don't tell people that? No, I don't go over and say that. His uncle was basically a member of his discreet organization. Of course he wanted his nephew to be a part of this. And he was very close with his uncle and he sold drugs uh, as a young man. <laughs> He ultimately decided to part ways and, and go the other route with his life. When you look at Bodie, his name is so huge and big in, in Baltimore. Of course, like you said, he have you know, inspired this HBO series, The Wire. So, you know, come on, man. That's like, you know, Michael Jordan's son. How can you, can you ever live up to this image? But he didn't want to live up to that image. What I think is, from him being little and being in the streets and doing all the bad stuff, and going to jail, he had time to think about where he wanted to change his life. So when he came home, you know, him and my mom was together. He worked, he had me. He probably thought about it as a, I got a daughter now. It's time for me to step up, be a man, and not just be out here like a little boy running the streets. That I challenge you guys to be. That I challenge you guys to be. Is unique. Is unique. Cause there's no better you. There's no better you. Cause there's only one you. Cause there's only one you. So I challenge you, brothers, to change. I challenge you, brothers, to change. And be unique. And be unique. When you see a young guy be able to stand up to his uncle and to choose right over wrong. It was awesome. Me and my cousins were at his mom's house on Castle Street, and he drove by with a shirt with blood on it, but we were children, we didn't know. This was an incident that haunted Dante for years. Hi, my name is Kenyatta. Everybody know me as Yadi. April the 7th. 2002 was the worst day of my life. And then my son had an accident. And, um, yeah. We went to East Point Mall. Um, we was out there. They were shopping. We were shopping. We just, you know, we stopped at McDonald's. We did everything. It was just like a beautiful day. The sun was shining. He, like, had a rainbow, all of that. And my son was in the he was so happy playing. He loved trucks because that's what Tater drove. Tater drove a truck. So he was so excited to get in this truck. He wanted to get in this truck so big. So when we got back, I parked my truck. Everybody went in the house. I went in the house. Everybody went to daddy, my mom went in there. So then um, I get back in the car. So when I got in the car, I pulled off. And you know, the accident happened. Like I felt something like boom, boom. Everything just stopped. We didn't know what happened until we got older. He hit a child, which was her child, in his friendly yard. Um, it was an accident. It hurt him a lot. Well, he just was right there trying to get the ball. And the ball rolled in the, uh, in the, in the street. And he went to bend down on the curb. And when the big, the big hole went in reverse, it um, knocked him down and crushed him. Um, whoa, um, so, um, within a, a half an hour, I'm gonna say the doctors came out and it was like, you know, he didn't make it, and I just like fainted, like dropped down, like, like, oh my god, uh, I me, mean, it. it. <laughs> Mm 
Maurice became the hospital responder for Sage Street. Deidre's coming home soon. But the one I'm most anxious to see is my man Leon. In a terrible accident a few years ago, I hit his little son with my truck and little Leon was killed. I don't know what our reunion would be like. Hmm. As the years went by, he felt like she hated him and like she couldn't stare at him when she see him. And he used to eat him up. I know that was a burden on his life. He's like, look, it's usually hard for me to talk about this, but um, actually, um, hit a small boy with my car many years ago, and the boy died. And uh, I think about that boy every day. And I walked up to her car like, "What's up, Yadi?" And she pulled the window down. She said, "You know, I want to tell you something." He said, "Dan, you know, I just saw her, and she told me she forgave me." So one day he seen me, and he was like, "Can I talk to you?" And I just was like. It's fine, come on, let's talk. And he gave me a hug, he sweats me so tight, I thought I was gonna lose my breath. Like the, the hug was so like, you could feel it. Like he was just like, thank you God, thank you God. And I had tears in my eyes, but it felt like somebody had lifted a building off my back. He started tearing up, I started tearing up. And he said, yeah, I did not mean it. I said, I know you did. I don't think that he thought he was gonna get the, the outcome that I gave him because he didn't know how much I was working on myself to even deal with him. He said, Dan, you know, can we share this with the city? And I said, absolutely. Panacea Media is a, a media platform devoted to the side of the story after the pain and the conflicts. It is devoted to themes of empathy and compassion, forgiveness, healing. Imagine if we could disrupt the violence you know, the next day, I recorded each one of them from different locations, and the city just loved it. Um, my son's name is Leon Coleman. Um, he passed away in 2002 from an accident. Let me make that clear, accident. So I know what I had to do for Dante was only right. And it's something that uh, I was fighting with for a long time. We talking about 20 years. I did forgive him. And um, like two weeks later, he got killed. I for a long time, man, but I'm telling you. Really like heal me, bro. me, bro. After the video, it's like, oh. the community. I guess it was, just, it was like we were stars or something. Like it was like one one person could put their hand on all these people, and now everybody can start here. It just made me feel so good to get phone calls, to get text messages, inboxes, messengers, people talking about they seen this video and they cried. And it was just big, and everybody was coming up to me, giving me hugs, like, wow, that's big of you. Because a lot of people think they can't do happy things because they always doing things that's so sad. My kid's dad, he even forgave him. So I'm going to throw that in there, too, because people want to know that. And yes, he never was mad at him at all. So once we release, release the hurt, everything prospers. Yeah. <laughs> what happened next is very peculiar. As they say, mothers know when something is wrong. And being that I'm really connected to my children, we have that energy. I felt my energy wasn't right. Shortly after Christmas, 
um, a mother in, in D.C., um, 40 minutes away, saw the video and was deeply moved. And um, she had actually experienced a, a very similar pain to Yadi. On June the 8th, 2020, uh, my youngest son was down here getting his hair cut. And he said, Mom, somebody at the door. I said, well, answer the door. So when he answered the door, it was the police. So they said, well, I'm sorry to say that Timothy was in a traffic accident. So I was like, a traffic accident? Timothy don't even have his car. And when he left here, he was running. He was like, can you describe what he had on? So everything that I described, they kept looking at each other. So I was like, what happened to my son? Why y'all keep looking at each other every time I describe a piece of garment? What happened to my baby? Where's my son? Police say Abbott was struck and killed by a driver on the corner of Piney Branch Road and Dahlia Street in Northwest. He was just 21 years old. He was crossing the intersection to come on the other side where the church was at. That's the direction to coming back home. My son was coming back home when his life was taken. When he approached and it came over, it gave him an extra little hump. And before he could know it, Timothy, life was just taken. Tim joined the prayer call with me every Monday night. I believe that my son was running back home to make the call with me. That's what I believe. That crosswalk right there when he was struck by a car, People that were on the scene that night say that his body was found by police about 40 plus feet away. You can see it outlined in green. The car that hit Tim did stop. You can see it outlined in orange. It wasn't intentionally. I do know that because he stayed on the scene and he slowed down and he called out for help. He reached out to call for help for my son. Regardless of what his situation was, the intoxication, how fast he was going, he still was honest to stay on the scene. We don't see that as much in the community. And then I was told by the detective that he asked to meet me. He wanted to give his condolences but the detective told him he don't think it was a good time. You can't determine that, because you don't know my heart. So she said, you know, Dan, look, you know, this man is willing to meet with me, and um, I want to go sit down and I want to speak to him. And she did, and we, we went there and we brought a mediator, and she sat down with the man who drove a car and killed her son. conversation is going to get a little difficult. It's okay. Like if you if you cry, you shed a tear, it's okay. What what happened that night? What happened from your point of view? I was coming from Piney Branch Road, coming into DC. I was coming up the hill and he was in uh, my blind spot, my uh, blind view, and I didn't see him. I was going uh, 40 miles per hour. And, uh, as soon as it happened, that's when I stopped and I got out of my car and I called 911. As soon as I got out and I seen him on the ground. Tim was my everything. He was my best friend. When I wanted to do wrong, I can hear my son's voice, even to this day. It's just that he has so much to offer to everybody. And to see how many people came out for his candlelight vision, it was just unbelievable. I just, I've, I've just been dealing with it for so long. I just haven't forgave myself. And I don't know if I can forgive myself. I just wish it never happened. I just wish it would, would have been me. Like the whole time it would happen, like I just thought about me being there instead of him. Ty, Ty, after you 
hear this gentleman's uh, apology. Do you forgive him? I forgave you. I forgave you. And he said, he stated that he wanted to hug me. I'm willing to hug him. I don't want you to walk around here feeling guilty. And that's why I'm doing this. I don't want you to feel guilty because I know how you was feeling. I want you to be free and live your life by seeing Yachty and Dante come together. <laughs> they they my inspiration butterflies. Um, mm. I'm emotional because um, because I wanted to meet Dante. I really wanted to meet him and just give him so much honor of being a man and stepping up and facing Yachty in the loss of her son, her young baby that was way younger than mine. And then when I was able to see they clip and hear Yachty and the passion that she had within her. I just knew my time was close and it just, it mowed me and shaped me even more how to really have an open heart of forgiveness when he come in my present. Sister, you don't even know what you did. <laughs> I have to share with the world and share with the community of how you all story gave me so much hope and courage. Mm -hmm. And mm, I said I wasn't gonna cry. You gonna but make me and Todd stay so strong. <laughs> but this lets you know that how real it is because yeah. it was important for me to meet you and Dante Amen. to just share how y'all just lifted me. Amen. And he's not Amen. even here to receive that. I'm so proud of you. I want you to keep that spirit. I want you to keep on going. I want you to keep on praying and know that God got you with this battle. You hear me? I want Amen. you to keep going. You got it. It was a blessing to speak with her. You know how big that is? That's big for somebody to watch you, forgive, and then go to theirs and forgive. Wow. Wow. That's big. That lady opened my heart up. That and I'm never mm -hmm. gonna forget about y'all. Never because you're, you're a unique person and your name is unique. <laughs> Thank you. So when you start to release, you start to forgive. When you start to forgive, then go to heal. Mm -hmm. You can see it. It'll be a mm -hmm. different glow. It's It'll written be a different all glow. over your face. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to say a word. Yes, you better come on and sing it. <laughs> Yes. One story of forgiveness sent ripples across two cities. Last week, we did a video of healing and forgiveness. And um, it was the most beautiful thing in the world. And I was with him on Christmas Eve, and uh, he was just... He was at, very at peace. Right? I know. I know he was in a good place. After that, he he spoke with that young lady. Though he definitely was in a good place. He was more alive. You know, it was like a bird was lifted off of him. You could see it and feel it. He was different. He was free. From the video of Connor, the founder of Panacea. We had noticed uh, last month we put out two videos with Dante Barksdale, Tater. And uh, some of you may have also noticed that today, uh, this morning, uh, Tater was, was shot and killed. Tonight, the city of Baltimore is mourning the loss of a beloved community activist. Officers say someone shot and killed Dante Barksdale this morning. Investigators found his body on Douglas Court near Orland Street and say he was shot in the head. 
I was on the highways. I was on Sunday morning. And his uncle wife called me. So they shot Tater. So I'm on the high, I say, what? I was sitting in my room. He just called me on FaceTime. He was talking about the Ravens game. Out of nowhere, he was like, I'm going to call you back. And he looked at his other phone, then looked out the window. My cousin called me and was like, you talk to your dad today? She, I'm like, why, wow, what's wrong? She like, are you, on? are you okay? I'm like, yes, what, like, what's going on? So I put two and two together. So I called my cousin back, like, what's something happened to my dad? I, w I was in church, my mom was just like, we gotta go. In the middle while the pastor was preaching, something happened to Tita. I got straight in my car and drove down the projects. And I got down there, I seen his car parked in the um, corner. And I saw the tape and stuff and I started crying. I got out the car, my um, godmother ran across the street, grabbed me, started crying. So I actually riding down the street and then all the police and people were standing on one side. I never thought it was him. Cause I would never think somebody would do that. Then as soon as I got in the house, someone called and said, you know you just rode past Tater, right? I'm like, no way. They was like, that was him right there. I'm like, oh. My whole, I stopped and I'm like, oh my God. So when I got there, they was washing the blood down. Yeah, that was like, wow. Yeah, he ain't deserve that. My mother went to the hospital. She came back to the house, she said, I said he did. She said, yep. I bust out crying. So it just messed me up, that's all. Put me in, you know, like, damn. That's tough. That day was tragic for me. Like, why? If nobody ever told him the impact that he made on somebody's life, that he made a hell of an impact on my life. This dear, dear friend of mine. Good job. He was a brother. You believe it'll work. Yeah. It was like my little son. Damn. So that's all we can do, man. Continue doing what we're doing. So that's how you preserve his legacy. I'm good. Go ahead. I try to be strong all the time for other people because dad wouldn't like me crying. So I try not to cry and I do good with it, but I have my breakdowns at night by myself. Yeah. If there's a battle going on inside of us, we take that battle on out into the world. Ugh. And I had to forgive him to heal myself. I knew that I couldn't go on in life on a daily basis with a hateful heart. We off to a new start. We have great things to take with us with our life. I forgive everybody who ever said something crazy to me about it or act like they want to do something to me about it, but I forgive them, bro. I forgive them because, you know, I don't know what kind of hurt they was going through. You know, they was in pain. But I forgive them too, bro. When they first started dating, Pop gave my mother a poem that she stuck up on the wall of our apartment. The poem is called The Cinderella, and it begins like this. Go placidly amid the noise and haste. 
and remember what peace there may be in silence. As far as possible without surrender, be on good terms with all persons. I think I know that poem by heart by now. I think I know that poem by heart by now. Okay, Connie? Connie. It's a movie behind this. We are going to our accusers and our accusers is coming to us, reaching out to mm. us. It's no pride in our young brother's way. Mayor Scott wrote, I will not let those who chose to violently take his life dampen the light of his work. Taylor says, that's some real gangster shit, forgiveness. That's some gangster shit, dude. Oh, you want a world with more love and compassion and forgiveness and healing? This is your opportunity to be that. If we don't forgive, then another murder going to take place a minute from now. We don't call you like we're enemies because we're not nobody's enemy. We're all friends. We got to stop this blood from shedding like a river in the streets of Baltimore. How much do you really want this to happen? Do you want to happen so much so that you're willing to lay down your life? Because that's what it's going to take. We're the stand to face the music hand. Tell a secret, ain't no way we gonna leak it to the grave, we gonna keep it kind, cause you and me, we are both soldiers, ain't coming back till it's over, I carry you home on my shoulders, we got the same blood, and when the rain comes, walk through the same blood, stay by your side, it's right. same organism between the hearts the rain no division we all shed the tears and grief we all share the say we breathe and when it's our time to leave it's the same red day